Hello, hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Oh my gosh, it's September. Sorry, I cannot believe it's already September the 3rd. So um, I was doing some reading. And so what I want to share with you guys today is, do you realize that when you are doing something in your Mary Kay business that you consider fun or brings you joy, you like doing that? And that honestly makes our business more fun. So do we want to just focus on the stuff that we find fun? Well, yes, if it brings us closer to our goal. So let me just say you love organizing. Let's say you're an organizing girl and you love like lining up your shadows and, and getting your inventory to look like a little retail store. I totally get that. So if that brings you joy and you spend your two hours today, kind of like maybe you go get a used shelf and you've got it to this China cabinet and you get it all organized. So it literally looks like a storefront. So now you're super excited. But if you only had two hours today to spend on your entire business and you spend it making that shelving unit look fabulous, Yes, that brings you joy, but does that move you closer to your goal? So that's kind of the catch 22. So do we focus on just what we love to do? Maybe, but we want to make sure what we, we want to find things that we love to do that will move us closer to our goal. All right. Now, what I will tell you is a lot of studies have been done. Um, uh, a lot of neuroscience and psychology studies have been done that show that if you're already good at something with a little bit more effort, you can be phenomenal at it. Versus if it's something that you're not naturally really good at and you'd spend a lot of money being a lot of training, trying to get good at something that doesn't mean you're going to ever excel at that. Okay. So let's just take public speaking. Some people are naturally really good at public speaking, but with a little bit of training and they can go from being powerful to impactful, like a Thea Elvin, Gloria Mayfield, like that kind of a, an auditor relation um, communication. I obviously need to take classes in that <laughs> anyway. Um, but the other thing is, is that if public speaking is not your forte, then you can ask yourself, do I need to be good at public speaking to get to my goal? And if my answer is yes, then I am going to want to do some training. So I at least build my confidence. But if public speaking to a large group is not a deal breaker for me to, let's say, become a director, if that's your goal, then I might say, OK, so I need to learn <clears throat> what will build my confidence in public speaking without taking a lot of my time. So I hope that makes sense. So let's go back and look at some of the things that could possibly, and I would love for you guys to type stuff in the chat section, unless you're driving. Um, but what I'd love to know is what are some things that you really love doing in your Mary Kay business? So I'm going to throw out something. Is it talking to people? Is it just being out and about? I, I love, in fact, I just yesterday wore my Mary Kay t-shirt from retreat that said confidence will never go out of style. And underneath it says Mary Kay Ash. So it's a quote. And I had that on yesterday and the lady came up and said, excuse me, are you with Mary Kay? I, she goes, I love your shirt. And we started to talk and she was an ex-consultant over 15 years ago. And so I got her name and number. We exchanged contact and I dro dropped off some samples to her last night, but she would have never stopped to talk to me, nor would I have probably approached her necessarily. But because I had the t-shirt on that had Mary Kay's quote on it, it made it super simple. So do you love just kind of when you're out and about talking to people? Do you love sharing the opportunity? Is your thing like, oh my gosh, I would love to tell the Mary Kay story to everybody. Like, oh my gosh, Cindy, you should hear about what Mary Kay did 58 years ago next week. We did, you know, like, do you love breathing belief into people? <clears throat> and when it comes to customers, what do you prefer? Do you prefer a one-on-one? -on -one? Do you prefer a small intimate group? What is your strength? Now, again, don't be blindsided by... Um, not liking something that's truly something that you need to live. Like, let's say you go, I hate the clothes. I don't like asking for the clothes. Okay, well, first of all, quit telling yourself that. Or if you say, I'm not good at that. Remember, we talked on Tuesday night about I am statements. And instead of saying, I am not good at closing, that is not a good mental picture. You just say, I'm confident in closing the sale. I'm confident, better yet, say, I'm confident hearing what my customers would love to have. That's what I look for. I'm confident in all of that. So Pay attention to your I am statements, what you're saying to yourself and what's important. So let's talk about some things. And if I'd love for you guys to jot some things down, or of course, <clears throat> type in the chat section, what are some parts of your business that you love to do? Um, maybe it's customer service. Maybe you love following up once the lookbook goes out, finding out what samples they have or what they would love to have. Um, maybe it's talking to people when you're out about, maybe you love handing out samples. Maybe you love those one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one facials. I remember back. Um, oh my gosh, probably the first five years I was in Mary Kay, I was so insecure and so unconfident. I never wanted to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Why? Because if it was just Lori and I, then I would have to talk to Lori. And if I didn't sound intelligent or I didn't know the answer, 
I didn't know what to say. Um, and I guess I wasn't confident enough just to wing it or whatever. And so if that was the case, a one-on-one -on -one would have made me really, really nervous. So what I really love to do is to have two people there because if Lori's there with, Su with Susie, Lori and Susie are going to talk to each other. Like if I did an in-person facial, which is what I did back then, everything was in person, is if Lori was there and Susie was there, they're going to talk to each other and say, well, I don't know, Lori, what do you think of this shade on me? Does that matte foundation match? And Lori goes, oh my God, your foundation looks great. I love that lip color on you. They're going to interact. And when they endorse what the other one is wearing, it comes different because it's them. So like if Lori turns to her friend, Suzanne and says, or Susan and says, oh my gosh, Susan, I love that lip color. Or that foundation matches so much better than what you normally wear. That's Lori endorsing me, not me endorsing me going, I picked a great color. You look amazing. Well, they kind of expect you to probably say that. So, so I'm, I'm hoping I'm making sense. So strengthfinders.com is a great place to find some of your, um, your gifts and talents when it comes to just the outside general world. Like, are you a promoter personality? Are you a problem solver personality? Are you a connector? Um, connectors where you take different people and you you thrive on introducing people who need each other in their lives kind of thing. Um, so there's a lot of different things, but a study was done and they took these kids that are good at reading. So they took two groups. They took, they tested all these kids on how fast they could read. I don't know exactly how they did it, if they watched their eyes or how they did it, but they tested these kids. Now, the group that was average readers were given these tutors that were like reading experts, people that could teach you like, you know, like I want to call it Evelyn Wood Reading Dynamics or whatever that speed reading school used to be years ago. But they were teaching these kids that were mediocre readers how to speed read and how to increase their numbers. And the kids went to like, I think it was over 20 hours of training on how to speed read. That's a lot of hours of reading. And they found that after about a month or two of this quote training from these experts, these kids that were mediocre readers got a little bit better. All right. Then they took this other group of kids that tested already as pretty phenomenal readers. They were pretty fast readers. They were above the curve on re speed reading. Right. And they gave them the same 20 hour training. Those kids went from already great. I think the score was like out of a thousand. They ranked at like 700. The other kids were at 500. The 700 kids went to like 900 and something. They were already good at something, but with a little bit of training and a little bit of tweak, they then got phenomenal results. All right. So you look at athletes. If somebody is a track star, does that mean they also can do the long jump? No. And if they're a track star, does that necessarily mean they can do hurdles? Not necessarily. If they're really good at something, what their coach is going to say is, you know what? I watch you clear those hurdles. I think you're in the wrong sport. I think you need to start focusing on hurdles. You're really good at that. So I want to ask you guys for your Mary Kay business, what are you really good at? What do you love? Now, if you're listening to this and you're super new, you might say, well, Diane, <laughs> I don't know what I'm good at. Well, what do you love to do? So I love, I love talking to people. I love handing out a sample. Um, I want, I've always told myself people chase me. I don't chase people. I love when people chase me. And I tell myself that all the time. I love when people chase me to the point where the lady yesterday called me. She says, thank you for dropping off samples. When are we going to get together? She's chasing me. That's my, that's the mojo that I put out. So be really Really, I can't emphasize this enough. Be really careful about what you say to yourself and what you edify in your own mind. Because if you say to yourself, this is hard, this is difficult. I don't want to seem pushy. Nobody wants to talk to me. They're going to think I'm pushy. They're going to think I'm this. If you put that out there, that's exactly what you're going to get back. And I had a consultant about a month ago say to me, well, none of my hostesses will give me their guest list. I said, hmm, okay. Okay. So none of, so what I hear you saying is that all the parties you've booked, when you ask the hostess for her guest list, she won't give it to you. She says, yep. I said, okay. I said, do you mind sharing with me and pretending I'm your hostess and tell me what you say? And she said, sure. So we were on the phone and she role played and she just said, hey, Diane, um, this is, I don't know, I'll pick a name. This is, this is Kathy. I just, um, I know your party's coming up on Friday and I was hoping you could give me your, your friends' names and numbers. I'm, I'm only going to reach out to them by text. I'm not going to call them. Um, but I, I do want to, I was hoping to reach them before the party because I want to find out a little bit more about their skin, unless you've already done that. But if I could get their numbers, if that's not, if that's not an inconvenience, that would be great. Okay. It sounds like she's apologizing from the second she opens her mouth about this instead, because I don't know about you, but if I was the hostess and I heard that I'd probably go, I don't think I'm going to give her my friend's numbers, right? <laughs> Maybe I'm just judging, but so 
If, however, Kathy came to me or this person, if she came to me and said, hey, Kathy, I'm so excited about your party next Friday. Now I've got your packet all made. I've got even extra goodies in there because you're my hostess and I'm putting together all the packets for your girls. So why don't you text me a list of, I just need their first name and their number. And then I'm going to text them a little quick survey to find out about their skin type so I can finish personalizing their sample packet. I can't wait to meet everybody on Friday end of the tech, end of the conversation. I'm not, I'm not apologizing. I'm not saying I'm hoping it's not an inconvenience. Would you mind please doing this? It's like, no, you just ask for, for what you want. So I hope I'm kind of making a point. My point is, is that what is it that you love to do about your business and focus on that? But I will tell you, have your goal in mind. So let's just say we're going to pick directorship. So let's say you are senior consultant with two on your team and your goal is directorship. Okay, so there's a couple stepping stones from senior consultant to director. So from senior consultant, you're gonna to go to red jacket, which is three. Your next little hurdle, your next little promotion is team leader, which is five. Your next promotion would be elite team leader at eight. Then your next promotion will be DIQ at 10. And then you, once you're in DIQ at 10 and you take all of your recruits, recruits with you from then on, is then you build to 32 directorship. So rather than look at just directorship, say, okay, what do I need to do today to move me from senior consultant to red jacket? So if you are saying, I don't really have any prospects, then I'm going to say to you, well, with eight faces a week, magical things will happen. Just trust me. I will bet you my next monthly paycheck that if you're doing eight faces a week of women that are 20 years old and older, you are going to find team members, customers, make money. It's a win, win, win all the way around. Okay. So if your goal was like, okay, Don, I really want to be a, a, a director. I'd say, okay, great. <clears throat> when is your ultimate goal to be that, to do that? So if this is September, you have September, October, November, December. So you have four months. I suggest people don't take four months in DIQ. I think it's more stressful. I would totally do it in three um, or two because it's just a momentum thing. Trust me. So if you said, okay, well, then I want to go into DIQ October 1st, then I would say, okay, so if you have a team of two, the goal is you need to add eight to your team. Know the numbers, you guys, because numbers don't lie. And I actually have a handout. Sorry, I have an itch. I have a handout that says from zero to DIQ in four months. So you can have not a team member, never shared the opportunity, and you can go from zero today to into DIQ with at least a team of 10 in four months until and it's the math, it's all broken out. And if you guys are interested in that, text me and I'm happy to send that sheet to you. So if you have one or two on your team and your next thing is red jacket, I'd say, okay, if you've got one on your team, you need to add two, usually one out of four who you, who you facial and share the opportunity with, or at least share what Mary Kay is all about, will join your team. So if you're looking for two team members, that's probably eight to 10 shares. If you share this core opportunity with 10 people, you're probably going to end up with two recruits. Now, I'll never forget Rena Tarbett's story when Rena Tarbett, who is now, a, she passed away, but she was a top national in all of Mary Kay. And she wanted to move up so bad. And so her director said, well, just line up. Uh, I think she said to her for line up 30 people and you'll get a gold medal. You'll get five recruits. So Rena went out and interviewed 30 people and she said, not one person joined. And she said, so she goes, she told me my numbers were going to be different. And she goes, so I didn't know what was wrong. Was it the people? Was it me? Was it the numbers? And so her director said, first of all, who are you talking to? Second of all, what are you saying? <laughs> and they did a little bit of training on that. But do you know that she then focused on the next 30? And within that, between the first 30 and the second 30, she got, I think, like nine team members and went straight, or maybe it was 10, got straight into DIQ because of the groundwork she had already laid. So, so let me go back and talk to you for just a minute about some things that you love. Now, I'm going to give you 11 categories. And what I will tell you is if you're not good at something, remember the kids, the, the reading group that I just talked to you about, if you're not a, you don't have to be a four, like on a scale of one out of one out of one out of 10, you don't have to be a 10 on everything. Okay. There's some things that as long as you're at least a six and a half or a seven, you're good to go. Right. But there are some things that if you're a two at, like, let's just say closing the sale, if you're a two at closing the sale out of 10, we, that's a skill based thing. That is a confidence building skill-based um, thing, a thing is not a word. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's a skill, it's a, it's a teachable, trainable skill. So if you are a two on closing the sale, is that vital to your goal? Yeah, because you don't have to be a 10 at closing the sale, but you gotta be at least like a seven and a half because otherwise you're gonna be putting a lot of product on faces and going home with 
zero. So again, do you have to be a 10 at it? No. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys some areas if you wanna jot these down. And the reason why I picked the scale of one, two, four is because there's no middle number, okay? Um, so on a scale of one to four, one being, I don't have a clue what that is, or I'm not very good at it, or I'm not sure. Two being, uh, not so much. Three is like, I'm pretty confident in that. Four is, yeah, if you asked me to teach that at the meeting, I could, I could probably do that. Does that make sense? So your scale of one is not a strength. <laughs> Two, a teeny bit went, uh, three is a little bit better, and four is, yeah, I could absolutely, I, I'm confident in that area. So the first area is getting leads, talking to people. When you're out, warm chatter booking, you don't have to book them on the spot, but when you're out, how, how confident are you on a scale of one to four, four being total thumbs up, ready to roll, how confident you are you at talking with people, getting leads, asking for referrals, all of that stuff, just generating names and numbers. What's your confidence level on a scale of one to four? And you're going to want to jot that down, so what, what number one is, and then your score. Number two is booking them. So let's say I gave you 10 names and numbers, right? So when you have those 10 names and numbers, what's your confidence level at booking those people for either a one-on-one -on -one facial, inviting them to a virtual event, whatever, just getting them from a, a number on a, on, a, on a business card like this gal, from getting her from just the business card to actually profiling her and dropping off samples. So what's your confidence level on a scale of one to four, one being low, four being high. Okay, third category, converting them to a party. So let's say on um, this gal, Alex, who I just um, booked with, what is my confidence level at converting her from just being a one-on-one -on -one facial to actually inviting some quick friends? Hold on. Okay, so again, number three is converting. So converting them, and that's what Mary Kay used to tell us to do. And I find in today's world, um, there's a few close people you can just say, hey, will you have a party for me? Like to your sister-in-law, and she'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But to the average person like Alex, I talked to her, I booked her for a facial, and then I said, Alex, so guess what? So Mary Kay's anniversary is this month and I'm super excited. I'm actually committing to 58 faces, which is almost double what I normally do. And I would love your help. Is there any reason why, and that's the best way to start at a question, right? Is there any reason why you couldn't invite a few people when we get together next week? Um, they could be local, they could be far away, but I can pop some quick samples in the mail because every face that I do this month counts toward my goal of 58 faces. And I thought it would be so fun because guess what? I can give you a hundred dollar shopping spree at half off anything you want. If you'll at least share your appointment with two to 10 of your friends. And she says, oh yeah, I could totally do that. And I said, great, great. So again, what is your confidence level of booking when you get that individual person, or she says she'll jump on a virtual event with you, getting her to invite others. All right. Number four is coaching the hostess or the guest. So once Alex has got that done, and I will tell you, there's a series of texts that I have kind of, <laughs> thanks to COVID, um, worked out of what I do. So the second the hostess says yes, I do a quick pick collage. If you're taking notes, I hope. Then I send her a text with that pick collage and I say, Would you like? Actually, I want her to chase me. So I say, Here's your sample or here's your invite. Would you like a sample text to send to your friends? It's really simple. She said, Yes, please. They always say yes. I've never had a hostess say, No, don't send me a sample text. She'd rather for timing, for everything, just copy and paste. Now, in that text, this is one thing that I've learned due to the pandemic, is when my, when my hostess, Lori, sends that out, in her text, it said, Sup I'm you know, super excited about my pampering session next Friday. I'd love to invite you. It's a pampering with Mary Kay. Please text my Mary Kay girl, Diane, at, and she lists my phone number, and let her know if you're coming, comma, your skin type, and your mailing address. Um, I, I'm so excited that you're going to come and get, I, I, I'm so excited. I hope you can come get pampered with me, something like that. But my name and my number are in there. Well, Lori's my hostess. So when Lori sends that out, what ends up happening is my phone starts going off within 24 hours and people are RSVPing back. And it's funny, half the time, they don't even tell you their name. They're like, hi, I'm coming to Lori's party. My skin is calm, but oily. Here's my address. And I text her back, hi, what's your name? And they always go, oh, sorry. And they give me their name. Now I have their phone number in my phone. So then my next text to them is, I've got a couple of quick questions about your skin. Do you have a quick minute? 99% of the time they will say yes. And I immediately pick up the phone and call them. So there is a process from when you coach the party with the hostess and the hostess and it holds. So when I hear things like I mailed out 12 packets, one person jumped on, or my hostess said she had 10 people coming on. I gave her the packets, nobody jumped on or things like that. 
my first question is, what kind of coaching did you do from the minute you booked it to the day of the party? Whether I don't care if it's in person, virtual, it doesn't matter. What are the steps? Because if, if you're not getting results, but you're putting the effort out, then never second guess that it's you. Always guess your always question your strategy, not your capability. Does that make sense? It's not like I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough. It's like what what strategy was I using? My strategy was, well, she's excited. She's my host, so she can invite her friends. I'll just show up. <laughs> well, that may not be a strategy that works. So what's your confidence level on the scale of one to four for coaching your hostess and talking to her guests that are coming? All right, number five is opening the party, whether it be in-person, virtual, or a hybrid, which is what I'm starting to do more like two or three people are on Zoom and the rest of the people are at her house. How, what's your confidence level on opening the party the first couple of minutes? Now, you might be using the digital showcase, which is brilliant because the focus is all on the pictures. Um, if you need a video, the company put out a great video recently on how to do a virtual party. But just your opening, I want to say your opening three to five minutes, the first three to five minutes of every session you do, what's your confidence level on a scale of one to four? Okay. All right. The next one, number six is your I story, sharing about the Mary Key opportunity. What's your confidence level of maybe sharing the three little things about like why you joined, what you're most excited about and what you see in the future, whatever it is, what is your confidence level of, of um, sharing the Mary Kay story? Okay. This is, and it doesn't necessarily be during a party. This could be somebody at the end of your party goes, so how do you do what you do? And you might be thinking, oh, that's a good, that, that's, a, that's a red light that's going off that says I should share the opportunity with her. And so she says, well, could we meet for coffee or can you stay on Zoom afterwards and talk to me about how your business works? How, what's your confidence on a scale of one to four to share her information right now? All right, number seven, we're almost done. The body of the party. So whether you're doing skincare or charcoal, microderm, whatever, what is your confidence level once you welcome everybody from getting through the wash your face with cleanser to the here are the sets that we have not closing yet, but just that the body of the party, where's your confidence level on that on a scale of one to four. And if you don't know a lot about product, I really encourage you to jump on our virtual events like Saturday mornings, Janice does one at 1030. We always have parties that you guys can be watching to learn about product. Plus the company has a digital showcase thing. I would watch that video 10 times. That's all you really need to know. All right, number eight is closing as a group. Now, closing in person, I have learned is different than closing virtually for me, okay? The first couple of parties I did virtually, I had honest to goodness, almost zero in sales because I was used to closing <laughs> with a closing sheet and I would give them a highlighter and they would color and then they would go eat and then I would close with them one-on-one. -on -one. Well, when you say goodbye and you end the Zoom session, you're like, snap now what am I going to do like <laughs> so then you have to call them and then you feel like you're chasing them so maybe you put two scores down for that you would do closing in person and it could be a one-on-one -on -one facial could be with a group of friends and then closing virtually because they are different your confidence might be a lot higher in one than the other so closing the sale and if you don't know please put this in your notes the eight point close everybody should know the eight point close pretty much in and out, in and out. It just should be on autopilot. I think I read it, I don't know, like 40 times and I just got it down. All right, number nine, there's only 11, so we're almost done. Number nine is the individual close. So at the end of the in-person party, you do a group close and everybody goes, eats the food the hostess made. Now, what do you do? How do you say, so what do you want to buy? Without saying, so what do you want to buy? <laughs> Um, and then virtually, how do you close virtually? <clears throat> what do you text? What do you say? What are you doing to get their wish list? Um, again, on the scale of one being low, four being high. Okay, the number 10 is asking for referrals. This is something I will truly tell you. I would circle that one. This to me is, it's not a deal breaker, but it really hinders your business if you're not gonna ask for referrals at all because you're gonna constantly be telling yourself, I don't have enough leads. I've already, I feel like I'm bugging my 10 friends. I don't have any leads. Um, and so. I'm going to tell you that that's, you want to learn how to ask for referrals. Okay. And number 11 is booking them for their second appointment. So what's your confidence level in doing that? And what's helpful with booking their second appointment is you are going to mention throughout your party that you get to get together again. So I decided when we went virtual a year ago, um, a little over a year ago, that I was going to make sure everybody knew that they got three appointments with me. And so I'm literally saying at the very beginning, I said, well, you guys today, 
you know, Lori's our hostess and, you know, yay for Lori because she's getting a whole bunch of extra hostess perks. I take such good care of my hostesses. And I do want you guys to know that we get to see each other three times. So we can either keep getting together with Lori and keep giving Lori all the half off and free stuff, or chances are you guys might be thinking, well, I want half off and free stuff. And so although you can keep coming to Lori's gigs, you could book your own gig and have anywhere from two to 12 of your friends. I just throw those numbers at two to 12 because it just rolls off my tongue. Um, so I'd say, well, is, you know, you can have anywhere from two to 12 of your friends. And if you book tonight, Lori gets extra perks. I know you guys all want to do that to help Lori, but then you get to book your own gig and we can do again what we did tonight, which is skincare and a spa treatment of charcoal mask. When we get together again, you have the option of doing either skincare with an anti-aging treatment, which would be either microderm or the glycolic radiance peel, or you can do skincare with makeup once we've done the basic skincare one. And so um, just make, I said, so make sure. So if you guys have people you have not said that to, you could literally go for however many bookings you have on your day book right now to a full day book by just going back to everyone, everyone you have facialed since March of 2020 and said, you know what? You could say, gosh, Lorraine, you know, I was just thinking about you. I owe you a huge apology. We got together last June and we did a virtual pampering session and I didn't realize this, but I was supposed to offer you a total of three appointments because they're all three free. We only did one. And I was thinking about you. One, I want to know how's your skin doing? And two is I want to let you know about these other two sessions because you and I can do them even if it's one-on-one. -on -one. I find if I can get her to agree and book the one-on-one, -on -one, almost always she will invite friends. So it's just about mentioning when I see you again. So you literally can take like a, a, like a little card, just take a little, a little piece of a business card or or a piece of cardstock and just write on here a couple little tips about seeing them again. I can't wait to see you again. Um, you know, let me know when we're doing, I can't wait to do your, your spot treatment. And if you guys think charcoal mask is good, oh my gosh, wait till you try the microderm or the glycolic. It's amazing. And I romance that to the point where at the end, they're chasing me. And remember, that is always my goal. I want them to chase me. So they'll get to the end. This happened to me about two months ago. I talked about that several times. I talked about microderm and showed them the pictures. And then I showed them that Susan's the lady's neck with the glycolic and so the gal at the end says so if I want to do that glycolic one do I book that with you now she's asking me because I forgot to ask her and I said oh absolutely we need to book that now <laughs> so again where's your confidence level on a scale of one to four booking that second appointment all right so what I want to tell you guys is that none of these are deal breakers to get you to the top but you don't but you if you're a one on some of these, you want to get to at least a three in all of them. Does it have, do you have to be a four in everything? Absolutely not. There's still some of these areas I'm not a four in, but there's none of them that I'm a one or a two at either. Do you know what I'm saying? So, and some of them will come really easy. So think about what is it with your Mary Kay business that brings you joy? Is it doing one-on-ones? Is it getting women together? Um, I started doing this about six months ago where I would set a date and a time and I'm the hostess. And I would just start inviting random people. I said, well, I'm having my own party and I'd love for you to come. I'd love your support. You count toward one of my 30 faces this month. And if you jump on, I have a friend, I have a gift for you. Now here's the deal. I'm really focusing on having um, 30 faces this month to pamper because I just, I need to master this whole virtual thing. So Shannon, who do you know that would love to come and get pampered with us on Friday night? Do you have a girlfriend? So maybe a colleague you work with, you guys could maybe do this at the office on Friday as soon as you get off work and then you guys could go out and have a drink together or something. And she'll go, oh yeah, Don, I probably know somebody. And I said, well, if you have somebody that you know, you get to choose one item at half off, anything you want. But if you have two people, you get a hundred dollar shopping spree at half price. Now, again, remember, you're not paying hostess credit to anybody else because you're the hostess. So if you held at least one party a week where you hosted it and your goal was to have six to eight bases there, here's what's happening with Zoom. They all become friends. I've had people say, well, can you guys put your numbers in the chat section? I'd love to get to know you guys. And they're, they're making friends. And most of the time they don't know each other. Even if like one lady invites a friend, another lady invites another friend, then another lady jumps on. They're all together on Zoom. Pretty soon they're all exchanging phone numbers and they've got new friends. Now, um, so with that said, the little list, I just want you to be thinking of, you know, time is time is time. We just it kind of like just sifts through our fingers. The next thing we know, it's going to be the holidays. And then we're going to be cleaning our closets for the new year again. So I will tell you, nothing 
is more pressing than right now. Right now, to me, is the sweet spot. We've been virtual long enough that women are totally good with Zoom and stuff. They're not Zoomed out if they get samples. If they're going to just do watch parties, they get invited to a lot of things from other companies, both Pampered Chef and Cabbie and the Touchstone Jewelry and the Paparazzi and the nails, the, like all the virtual things. You can only watch so much stuff on Zoom, you know, drinking your coffee or your wine and eating your snack and just watching. But when you get a customized pack of samples in the mail to get pampered, um, it's a whole different ball game. And so one of the phrases I've been using for the last couple of months, that's really worked for me with bookings is saying, oh my gosh, Lori, I would love to pamper you. You know what? It gives you permission to pause your life for an hour. And Lori, you deserve that. You deserve to have an hour of just a little bit of, of me time, tranquility, and self-care. Does that sound like fun? And when Lori says yes, then I book her then I turn it into a party. All right. So I'm going to zip through this list really fast again. So number one was getting the leads, talking to people, but actually physically getting a name and number, not just handing out samples. We can all do that. Number two is booking them. You get the name and number. Now you're going to book her. Three is converting it to a party. So you're going to book her for a facial and get her to invite friends. Number four was coaching the hostess and getting her guest list and working with her guests. So from the time she says, yes, I'll have a party to the time the party holds that gap the parties are not holding or you're having the hostess and one person jump on, but she invited eight or you sent out eight packets. And it's really important, you guys, please tighten up one thing. And that's your follow-up to the packets you've sent out. So I literally have a wipe off board in my, in my, um, in my desk area that says packets out. And as soon as somebody gets a packet out, if they are not on the event, they said they were going to be on. I make sure I had to start writing them down. Cause I couldn't remember, does she still have a packet? Does she have a packet? But I've been able to book a lot of amazing one-on-one -on -one appointments with these people with packets out. And then they're quite easy to book a party off of once they have that 40 minute time with you. Once they know how fun it is and how great the product is, they're all in. All right, so that was number four is coaching the hostess. Number five is opening the party. Number six is sharing the Mary Kay information, whether it be at a facial, an interview, whatever, sharing your eye story and the Mary Kay facts. Um, number seven is the, the body of the party all the skincare from once you say hello and welcome everybody to the close, that part. Number eight is closing as a group. Number nine is the individual close and actually asking for the sale. Number 10 is asking for referrals. And number 11 is booking them to see you at least one or two more times. And I wanna share with you guys one really quick thing about referrals as we wrap this up. What's interesting about referrals is I did some, um, a little bit of research for my um, networking group. And it's interesting how, um, Millennial, it's it's interesting how people are 64% more likely. They're say they say they are willing to give you referrals if you ask for them. 64% of women said they were willing to refer you to a friend if they were asked to do so. And what else is interesting is if they were referred by somebody, they were like, I think the number was like 70 something percent higher to buy. So for example, let's say Lori referred me to Kathy. And I don't know Kathy. Well, once I meet with Kathy, Kathy is over 70% more likely to buy because she was referred by her friend, Lori. So don't underestimate referrals. Even if every customer only referred you to one, that could be your next thousand dollar hostess. Okay. So, so again, keep in mind on some of these things, you're going to be a one or a two at. And so what you want to do is see what is it going to take to get you from a two to a three, just over that, that the hump for a lot of it. Honestly, it's repetition, repetition, repetition. I know you don't want to hear that, but when I've been doing phone blitzes with calling with consultants, the first day they go, oh, I was a disaster. I stumbled over my words. I left the most ridiculous voicemail messages. And by day two, they're like, well, I did better. And day three, they're like, I got it. Bring it on. I can do this. So it's funny how it is. It's truly repetition. So thanks for tuning in, you guys. Let me know what your strengths are. What do you love to do? And I hope this helps your business explode.